In recent weeks, we have seen a huge development in the world of AI where companies and developers are putting a huge emphasis on AI agents and models by developing semantic memory. Now we've seen this with MemGPT where it gives AI agents unlimited memory a memory management system in other terms. Another method is through SPRs, which is also known as sparse priming representations, and it allows AI to retain memory through prompting. Today, I bring forth a new model by the one and only Microsoft, introducing semantic kernel memory, a new open source AI project that specializes in the very task taking data-driven application where it takes this new method of memory management to new height. It's a powerful tool that efficiently indexes datasets through custom continuous data hybrid pipelines. This means that it can seamlessly integrate with various data sources and storage solutions, making it an ideal choice for a wide range of applications. One of the most standout features of semantic memory is its ability to enable natural language queries. Now, this is thanks to advanced embeddings and language models, as well as the system that empowers users to ask questions in plain English so that it can obtain answers directly from the index data. Imagine being able to ask complex questions about your datasets without having to write intricate queries or swift through mountains of raw data. If you are interested in booking a one-on-one -on -one with me, you can definitely do so with the link in the description below. Semantic memory is a game changer in the realm of data indexing as well as for natural language querying. Throughout today's video, we're gonna dwell a little bit deeper on explaining this framework by showcasing the capabilities, installing it, and just basically going over some cool demos with this new model. So with that thought, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at semantic memory or also known as kernel memory. It's an open source and plugin dedicated system that is streamlined to basically help datasets index through custom continuous data hybrid pipelines. This is something that we can see in this image over here. You're able to input various different data sources, whether it's docs, Word docs, PDFs, chats, meetings, videos, emails, presentations, and such forward. It is then sent to the system pipeline, which extracts the data, transforms it, has insights based off the data sources and then sent as a semantic memory. It can then retrieve and have unlimited memory based off this whole loop. Now, something that you can basically use this in certain cases is that it could be utilized as a library or a Docker container. Now, this is by harnessing advanced embeddings and large language models, which the system enables NLP systems and queries which allows users to retrieve information from index data and this is something that you can see over here it's sent to the cognitive planner the semantic memory is then sent to the rag and it answers whatever uh, is your input query is and it allows you to retrieve this information from this index data hybrid pipeline and it links basically to the original source with the given citation is designed to be seamlessly integrated as a plugin with semantic kernel as well as with copilot and chat gpt this is something that will enhance data driven features and applications that are designed with the most popular ai platforms it's supported with many different backends we have vector storage azure cognitive search quadrant Content storage utilizes Azure Blobs, local file storage, and we also have asynchronous uh, ingestion queues, which utilizes Azure queues, RabbitMQ, and local file-based queues. If you would like to access our private Discord where you can access free subscriptions to AI tools, networking opportunities, and so much more, definitely take a look at the Patreon link. Definitely follow World of AI on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, subscribe, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Now, before we go further into talking a little bit more about semantic memory, we need to understand the backbone of it. Now, that's where we understand what memories are. Memories play a crucial role in providing context for different types of reasoning. They've always been fundamental in computer operations, similar to RAM in a laptop, which gives computer relevance by storing data it needs. 
In the same way, memories can be something that has some sort of relevance as to how semantic kernel operates, as it accesses memory in three possible ways. Firstly, you have conventional key value pairs. This method involves matching a key to your query, like setting environments. You have the conventional local storage, which stores information as files, which are retrievable by their file names, and it is suitable for managing extensive data. Thirdly, you have semantic memory search. This method represents text as numbers, vectors, which are embeddings, and it enables semantic searches by comparing meaning to meaning with your query, which is a particular intriguing way. Now, these are basically the three possible ways as to how semantic kernel is able to access memory. So how does semantic memory work? Well, it has embeddings that represent words or data as multi-dimensional vectors, similar to directional arrows with length. Now these vectors help measure relationships between words as well as data, which is making it so much easier to perform operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication. Embeddings are crucial for AI models as they basically enable computers to understand and process the meaning and context of words or data. When using embeddings, it adds a different transform theory into an embedding representation, and a search is then conducted to find the most similar vectors, akin to a web search engine providing closely related results. When semantic memory may not provide exact match, it consistently ranks matches based on how similar they are to the query. And that's basically how this framework operates. It retrieves memories in three possible ways, and then it works on basically through this pipeline in which it queues these different types of methods of retrieving the memory into the context it is provided. So how can you get started? Well, the first thing that you will need to do is make sure that you have the requirements fulfilled beforehand. You'll need Git, which is an application that will help you clone this repository of Onf of GitHub. You'll need VS Code, which is going to be your code editor. You'll need an open AI key or you need or you can just provide a key via Azure Open AI Services. You will also need .NET 7 SDK and you will also need Polygot Notebook. So once you have these all fulfilled, you can get started with installation. I'll leave all the links in the description below so that you can access it fairly easily. But what you want to do first is go on to the GitHub repo of kernel memory. Go on clicking this green button, copy the link of the repo, open up command prompt. Once you have that opened up, you want to type in git clone and paste the link. Click enter. This will start cloning the repository and then we can move forward and to start working with the different notebooks that are within kernel memory. Once you have finished cloning it, what you need to do is go into Visual Studio Code, click open folder. Now you want to find where you had cloned it and open that folder up. So once you have this opened up, you can trust the authors at your own discretion and you can get started with the readme, which will basically showcase what you can do, some of the things in which you can incorporate kernel memory within, such as Copilot, as well as with GPT. Now, in this case, they have a couple examples in which they have it running. So this is where they got answers via web service, where they asked the question, any news from NASA about Orion? And it gives this relevant answer. And we can see over here, it provides the sources and the citations, which is something that we talked about in the pipeline. Now, what you can actually do is that there are a couple of examples in which you can start playing around with. You can see that there's different cases where you can run these. Uh, you have a .NET web client example. It, there is notebooks as well. Uh, I'm gonna open this up and I'll be right back. So you can easily do this by clicking on any notebook that you want to work with. In this case, we're going to click on the readme, show the preview. In this case, there's many different examples of how you can use kernel memory. If you're trying to have collections of Jupyter notebooks with various tasks, you can just go on the 000 notebooks. If you're going to import files and ask questions without running the services on serverless mode, you can run it through the test over here. And if you can go down to how to upload files files with the command line, 
you can basically go through many of these different ways of running it it's fairly easy each of them have their own readme in which it gives you the commands as to how you can test out these examples this is a way for you to run it fairly easily and you can have it so that these examples can basically be just started up with a simple run.command file or a run.sh if you're on i believe uh, when our mac os but in the case for this video there is one thing that i want to keep it I want you guys to know and that is when you open up the readme uh, if you have this opened up you can see that there is many different customizations as to how you can have this running you can have kernel memory in a serverless mode set up with chatting with important documents within your own local host that's completely private you can do this with the following command you can ask it questions as well with the following commands and this is a way for you to easily set up you can do this by creating a new file python file with the following command upload your own files and have it relevantly connected with the question answering system that is over here now you're also able to have data lineage citations using kernel memory as a service which in which you can have it in different areas uh, it shows how you can run these services it gives you a good step-by-step -step, uh, configuration setup in where you can actually have it launched in other cases if you go back over here you can go down a little bit more and it talks about how you can run this and set this up with the following commands it's fairly easy you go into the dotnet slash service uh, file and once you have done that you can then set up use the setup command and then run command to have it start up it showcases how you can import files using kernel memory web ser services and there's many different types of customizations with this you're also able to implement different plugins and different applications with this so if you're interested in this definitely take a look at the repo as it will tell you a lot more information than this video so how can you implement this into your own application this is a FAQ that is very famous with kernel memory. There's two main modalities, as a service and serverless. So uh, this basically means that you can run kernel memory as a service, which allows to interact with memory via HTTP. And this is in basically any sort of language that you want. Now, it says that the repo contains a memory web client for .NET and some examples showing how you can do the same for the command line with curl. It also states that for the second method, you can embed kernel memory directly onto your .NET application. And you're able to do this with the following approach, which showcases the documentation as to how you can do this. This is possible for you to integrate, integrate on a serverless as well as a service. So if you're interested in this, definitely take a look at this and read through it so that you can definitely take a look at how you can do this. Now let's actually take a look at an example where you're able to install upload a doc and ask a question with unlimited memory with kernel memory. Now it's fairly easy. What you want to do is install all the packages. This is by clicking on execute cell each and every tab. So once you have inputted your API key that you want to access, you can then move forward and then click, keep on clicking continue. Now this will start building what is needed for it to actually operate and you can basically ask it questions and upload documents and in this case it says you can import pdf files you can upload it into the notebook over here and ask it different questions in this case it was able to ask what's semantic kernel and then the answer is then then the agent is like sourcing for the answer and then, then answers it over here semantic kernel is a lightweight sdk software development kit developed by microsoft etc etc and then it shows the source like the citation as to where it found it which is absolutely amazing this is something that could be implemented into a lot of workflows and they have a lot of resources as to how you could do this this is the great thing about microsoft they have a lot of resources and a lot of tutorials that showcase all of this so definitely take a look at this because this is something that is quite huge as it's replicating exactly as to what uh, memgpt is doing but a little bit better in summary guys semantic memory is going to be something that will basically elevate any sort of application because of its adaptability and easy integration and its far-reaching impact in various sectors definitely take a look at this with all the links i have provided it's going to be a great gateway to streamline data and access it as well as retrieving it so i'll leave all these links in the description below and with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching definitely check out the consulting page if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one. 
follow the patreon page if you want to access our private discord check out world of ai on twitter and lastly make sure you subscribe turn notification bell like this video and check out our previous videos with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas